the systematic review titled High Speed Running and Sprinting in Professional Adult Soccer by Antonio and colleagues aimed to summarise the evidence regarding absolute and relative velocity thresholds used to classify high speed running and sprinting, report high speed and sprint running distances achieved in matches and to provide recommendations to elicit high speed and sprint running distances during training. 30 studies carried out between 2013 and 2022 were included in the review. Four studies were carried out with female players, 25 with male players, and one used a combination of both. The studies comprised of a total of 1,897 adult soccer players, 97 were female and 1,800 were male. The total number of analysed games was 442 for females, and 2,098 for males. This presentation, brought to you by Talking Sports Science, will provide a summary of their findings and recommendations. In terms of defining absolute thresholds, regarding high-speed running entry velocity for females, this is typically set between 12.2 and 15.6 km per hour, with 12.5 km per hour being the most common. And for males, high-speed running entry velocity is typically set between 14.4 and 21.1 km per hour, with 19.8 km per hour being the most common. Regarding sprint distance entry velocity for females, this is commonly set between 17.8 and 22.5 km per hour, with 22.5 km per hour being the most common. While sprint distance entry velocity for males is typically set between 19.8 and 30 km per hour, with 25.2 km per hour being the most common. However, unfortunately, no consensus in the literature exists. Therefore, entry velocity for high speed running and sprinting values can be set anywhere within these ranges, or alternatively, those used by FIFA and UEFA can be adopted, which for high speed running is 19 and 20 km per hour for females and males respectively, and for sprinting is 23 and 25 km per hour for females and males respectively. Because absolute thresholds fail to account for individual differences, relative thresholds based on an individual's physical velocity capacity are recommended for specific training sessions where the goal is to reach near to maximal velocity exposure. However, currently there's insufficient evidence to allow specific recommendations to be made and it should be highlighted that solely relying on relative velocity thresholds may prevent comparisons between players, training or matches, and over time, when the same players have changed their individual velocity thresholds. Moving on to high-speed running and sprinting during official matches. In a professional female soccer match, around 1,000 metres are covered by high-speed running, and around 270 metres are covered by sprinting with a large proportion of high-speed runs and sprints being typically performed over distances shorter than 10 metres, with the average recovery time between high-speed runs being 14 seconds and between sprints being 87 seconds. And in a male professional soccer match, around 760 metres are covered by high-speed running and around 200 metres are covered by sprinting. Between 1 to 5 metres are the most common distances covered by high speed running, apart from the fullbacks, where the average high speed run is between 6 and 10 metres. It's important to recognise that high speed running and sprint distances are position specific, as well as highly variable depending on the quality of the opposition and between games. In terms of playing position, there is typically greater variability for central midfielders and defenders while lower variability for wide midfielders and attackers. And the tactical purpose of each playing position can influence why the players perform their sprints. For example, defenders usually sprint to intercept the ball, midfielders typically run to close down and press the opponents, and attackers typically run throughout the channel to receive or exploit space and to break into the box. Regarding the quality of the opposition, high-speed running and sprint distances appear to increase when playing against stronger opponents. However, independent of the opponent's level, players appear to perform significantly less high-intensity activity when they are winning 
in comparison to losing, or when their score is level. Therefore, when analysing high-speed running and sprint demands during matches, a case-by-case -case approach is recommended. To ensure players have adequate high-speed and sprint running exposure during training, a combination of sided games, running-based drills, and game profile-based training is recommended. Regarding sided games, when a smaller relative playing area during training is used compared to official games, the number of accelerations and decelerations increase, but it's difficult to achieve adequate volumes of high-speed running. Instead, larger sided game formats are recommended. To induce high-speed running distances comparable to an official match, it's recommended to use relative playing areas greater than 225 meters squared per player, for example, 9v9, in a space larger than 90 by 45 meters. And to induce sprinting, it's recommended to use relative playing areas greater than 300 meters squared per player, for example, 9v9 again, but this time in more space, for example, greater than 90 by 60 meters. However, the open nature of sided games can result in large variability in high-speed running and sprint distances across players, with the risk of overexposure for some and underexposure to others. An alternative or complementary training method to sided games is running base drills with linear and non-linear sprints. This could be done by mixing linear sprints and sided games by players performing repeated runs before or after sided games or adding running phases during the sided games or simply using isolated running based drills to achieve the high speed running and sprinting exposure required. In terms of game profile based training, this can be defined as one or more bouts of physical and technical activities. For example, high intensity intermittent running, change of direction and passes, which replicate the type of movements and physical demands of match play. Early research indicates implementing this type of training does appear to induce similar relative high-speed running and sprint running distances to those achieved in official matches. Regardless of the approach used, exposure to high-speed running and sprinting in training is particularly important for non-starting players that need to compensate for missing that speed load experienced during the match. And that concludes this presentation. I recommend you go and check out the full article. The link is in the description. Thanks for listening, folks. See you next time.